Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I go about painting or airbrushing my models, uh, specifically German tanks. Um, I'm no expert, but I know how tricky it is when you first start. You get an airbrush and you think that you're going to be able to paint some awesome stuff, but sometimes um, you just need a little bit of guidance on what the setting for the compressor should be, a good idea of what airbrush you should be using, um, and what ratio of thinners to paint. So I use a Harder and Steinbeck Evolution, which comes with two needle nozzles, 1.40 millimeter and a 0.20 millimeter. I've also purchased a 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle, which I find works great for this scale, uh, Flames of War, 15 millimeter. Um, for those real fine German stripes, those green and brown stripes, um, it, it works wonders. So once I'm happy with the models I want to airbrush, I've primed them. I'm then setting the compressor to 30 PSI for the base coat. Um, this is using uh, Tamiya XF60 um, with uh, acrylic thinners. Um, you're going about two to one ratio here. You, you can even, you know, you can even put less thinners in as well, three to one, because uh, the needle and nozzle that I'm using here is the 0 0.40. Um, I don't go for the 0 0.20. I'll go for the 0.4 purely for the surface area. I'm getting more spray um, using the 0 0.40, so it's covering a little bit more area. So you don't want to be spraying too close to the model. You don't want those um, issue, those mistakes where the paint starts to run away from you. Just keep it at a fairly um, good distance. I'm probably even a little bit too close in this video, but I didn't have any problems. Obviously the control as well when you're spraying is, is of importance. So you don't want to be going too hard and pulling too far back. Just, just uh, go use it gently. So this is a Yang Tiger that I've I've painted. That was all with the airbrush. There was no touch-ups with a paintbrush there. And that was using the 0.15 millimeter uh, needle and nozzle as well. Uh, in this video, I'm not gonna be doing modulation. Uh, I'm just gonna be putting a base coat down and putting some camo down, just um, to show you how easy it can be. If you wanna make it easy, you can get into modulation. Um, and a lot of people do, and the results are fantastic. Uh, but sometimes with this scale, it's just really not necessary um, unless you really want that perfect finish. Uh, but if you're just starting out, I'd focus on the basics, uh, making sure you get yourself a decent airbrush. Uh, I've got a pretty cheap compressor, but the airbrush is uh, important. This airbrush cost me about 250 Australian dollars. So you're looking at about 160 to 170 USD. You know, a hundred odd pounds. So with this uh, truck I only gave it one base coat because again this is just a quick video so I'm really not that bothered about it. It can't really be used in the game anymore anyway so I'll just give it a quick one. Cool. So now I'm moving on. Now I'm doing the stripes. I'm setting my compressor to one bar or 15 psi. Um, I'm then going to uh, hook up my 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle. Um, I'll put all the links in the description of uh, where to purchase all this stuff. But I'm putting this needle and nozzle in. Uh, I'm going one uh, one to one ratio, so one paint to one thinners. Um, you don't want to block the nozzle on this because it's so fine that uh, any little buildup of paint will block the nozzle and you're not going to be having any good results, that's for sure. So I'll just test it out on the palette. As you can see, real nice lines there. And with the design that I'm going for with this grill, or griller, terrible with the German names, uh, it's something similar to the picture that's shown here. Um, so a 0 0.20 millimeter um, needle probably would have done the job just as well. But I find using the 15, um, I get a lot more control with it. And I can get really close there. So you can see how close I am. I'm getting some lovely control. I'm not having any issues where the paint's splattering. 
it's just coming out really nicely because I've got that thinners to paint ratio spot on. And then you can go back over it. You've got the control um, to go back over it. Again, I'm being quite gentle with how much air is being released. Uh, as you can see in that picture, that's a tiger that I painted up using the airbrush again. You can see some of those real fine lines in there. That was using the uh, 15 mil needle and nozzle, or 0.15. So I've got the foam protecting the inside of the vehicle because I want to keep that base coat, that dark yellow um, current in there. I don't want any green being sprayed into there. Now I've slowed the video down at this point just to show you the result that I got. Obviously you could get this with a bigger needle and nozzle but the whole purpose of that was just more control. I can design how I want the lines to come out. And then I'm moving on to the wheels. So you can see I've got some nice straight lines there. Do the odd spray on the palette and on the hand just to make sure that there's no um, blockage present before I move on to the next one. And as you can see, I'm just giving it a good go. So this is a photo of um, some LRDG that I painted up again. Um, you can see those real fine green lines. They were I was using the 0.15 uh, needle and nozzle for those. I, I really swear by this. Um, I've used the 2.20 before and I just don't like uh, the results I get for this scale. I always find that maybe I'm not setting the um, air compressor correctly, but I just find that I really struggle with it. The same could be said with um, the paints that you use. I find that when I'm using this smaller needle and nozzle that I really struggle with the MIG and the Vallejo sort of range. I, again, it's probably personal preference, but I really think that uh, for me, Tamiya works best for this. Now moving on to this, so in for this truck I'm just going to do some squiggly lines I'm, again like I said before I'm really not that bothered about how it comes out so I'm just going up and down just so you can see how sort of fine you can go with this Cool and there you go, there's some of those green lines and then we're moving on to the last color, the brown. <clears throat> so exact same method, one-to-one -one ratio, thinnest to uh, paint. Um, and I'm just gonna be spraying that one on. I've slowed the video down so you can see how easy it, com how easy it can come out um, and the control that you can get using it, as long as you get that ratio correct. I apologize for this part. I uh, lost where the camera was for a moment, so it's going to be a bit difficult to see what I'm actually doing. But um, towards the end of the video, you'll definitely uh, you'll definitely see a better result. And then there's some uh, panthers I've painted up there, my most recent ones. Again, just using that same combination that I've been discussing throughout this whole video, um, and you can get some lovely results with that. And then once I'm finished here, uh, I will soak the airbrush uh, with the thinners that I was using. And then if I find that the nozzle is still a bit blocked, then I will um, use it. There's a special Tamiya cleaner that I've got for it. When I say soak the airbrush, I'm meaning 
with the actual not soaking the whole airbrush i'm just putting thinners in and just letting it soak for a bit and there you can see the finished result there all right guys thanks for watching i hope this has helped um but yeah feel free to leave any comments uh, and i'll try and answer as many questions as i can thanks